hey everybody welcome to the channel this is Fade Kemi also known as Janet and I'm just here being Fade K. that's who I am thank you for you know tuning in to this latest vlog this is my Q&A um, and that was inspired by some questions that I had solicited for on Instagram so if you're not following me here are the platforms find me let's connect let's make this a thing okay so yeah, so I'm just spending the next couple of minutes, you know, answering some questions that I was asked so y'all can get to know me and then we can continue this conversation down in the chat, in the next vlog, on DMs, however, whenever, I'm your girl, let's do this, let's get to know one another. This whole vlog is just for me to, you know, share a bit of myself um, based on whatever it is that y'all wanted to know. And if this sparks conversation amongst you, um, within yourself, or within a group of friends that you may have. Can I get in on the convo? <laughs> Include me in the group chat, okay? Um, I would love to, I would love, love, love to rub minds with y'all. So um, without any further ado, let's get into the questions, shall we? All right, first question that I was asked was, how can you hear when you're being directed spiritually? Um, there's no generic way of knowing like or yeah, exactly yeah that's the word i want to use there's no generic way of knowing when you are being directed spiritually because in order to be and again directed and i'm speaking from the standpoint of being directed by the holy spirit let's let me use this 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 as an avenue to clarify being directed spiritually does not always mean the holy spirit Take heed to that because the spiritual world, the most supreme presence is that of God and the Holy Spirit and the Son of God, Jesus Christ. But there are other spirits in existence and we need to be mindful of that because there is similarities in the way that the spiritual world connects with the physical world, whether it be by the Holy Spirit or by other familiar spirits. I'm being very intentional about saying that because because there are replicas, you can create a duplicate of a relationship that should be had with Christ with another spirit being, but the clearest and the most defined difference is that one is unto death and of course the, the spiritual relationship that we have with Jesus Christ is unto life. So with that being said, um, we have to be mindful of what our focus is, but primarily who or what spirit we're in relationship with. So let's start there. You will be able to know if you're being directed spiritually, if you are aware of what spirit is directing you. And in that in, 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 um, in the receiving of direction, there is a level of relationship that's required. Um, and if you just even think about that, like just human to human, for your mom to give you a direction, you're you're gonna obey it because of the relationship that you have with her. That is your mother. Your mother is to you is a guardian, and then you to your mother, you are a responsibility. Um, so if she tells you go pick that up over there, she has a level of authority over you that will make you obey. I'm going somewhere with this, right? So with that being said, you have to one be in relationship with, I'm going to say the Holy Spirit. I would never encourage anyone to be in relationship with any other spirit that is not the Holy Spirit because that goes against everything that I believe. Um, but it is possible, I will state this, it is possible to be in relationship with other spirits. So you might wanna define first who you are in relationship with, primary. Um, secondly, in every relationship, there's a way that you communicate. The way I communicate with my mom is different from the way that I communicate with my husband, which is different from the way I communicated, communicate with my sister, or my sister friends, or my coworkers, or my um, the students, or people in church. You know, it's different because every relationship has its own requirements or its own purpose that it fulfills. So. I'll, I'll give you a peace of mind. In my relationship with God, I know I hear him when I'm studying the word. Please excuse me. I have a cold. Or I'm recovering from one, rather. 
um, when I'm reading the word. That's one of the one of the ways that I hear God or I hear the Holy Spirit or I hear Jesus Christ because God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, all three in one. Hello, praise the Lord. Sorry, let me focus. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that was funny. All right, really back in, Janet. Here we go. So, um, yeah, so that's one, one of the ways that the Holy Spirit communicates with me. Because as I'm reading the word and I'm gaining revelation through God's word, because it is alive and it has a spirit and, it can, and it's engaging, um, there are things that Holy Spirit will bring to my mind um, that connects to that scripture, whether it be a person, someone else, whether it be myself, whether it be, you know, a situation I'm going through in my life currently or something that I experienced. It, it could be a lot. So reading the word is one way that I know that I'm being spiritually directed because um, wisdom abounds in the word of God. I also am, I know, and this is for me, um, when I'm being spiritually directed through worship. Um, I am a worshiper. It's a part of my Christian identity, um, but I am also a minstrel. So because those titles overlap um, in some ways there, connected but there's a very fine thin line between the two of them if you will um i know in the moments of worship especially when i feel like it's intensifying i i gain direction it's happened multiple times for me um through prayer when i'm praying i'm pressing either towards particular need or if i'm just like in fellowship with god i i gain direction that way and then also, it can be very, um, how do I say this, sporadic in between those those avenues. So reading the word is a sure one. Worshiping is a sure one. Praying is a sure, um, is a sure one. But then sometimes they just happen. Like I could be walking down the street. Like I know for a season in my life, oh, this is, this is actually very wild. Um, early in my life, way before I got buried, um, there was a particular time where no matter where I was going, I would see pregnant women. <laughs> it's so weird. Um, I could be going to the bank. I have to run into a pregnant woman. I could be going to check the mail, which is literally just right in front of my building. I would see a pregnant woman. Going, I could be in a different state for all I know and there's a pregnant woman. And I don't know them. They just happen to be visibly pregnant. And most times they're in like, I would, I would, I would assume is their third trimester because they're visibly showing. Um, so whenever I would run into them, and again, it's not even like I would interact with them or say hi or even smile or make eye contact. They don't see me, but I see them. Ooh, see, like even right now, I feel okay. Um, <laughs> whoa um but in that in those moments when it would happen holy spirit would di direct me to pray for them their child and there was usually a particular prayer point that that would always rise up in me and it's this child will not bring shame or reproach to their mother neither will their mother or their mother's house or their father's house bring be a source of shame for them that's a very intentional prayer. I don't, again, I don't know these women from Adam. I've never seen any one of them again. Um, but that was just something that I was directed to do in the moment. It was very sporadic. So it's not like I would leave my house and I would hear, Father Kemi, you are going to see a pregnant woman. Make sure you pray for her. It would be in the moment. Like I would look up or I would, my mind would come back from wherever I was thinking and I would just spot a pregnant woman. And then the, the word is to just pray. So yeah, in a nutshell, your relationship with God is going to reveal to you how you are being spiritually directed. Because it's in relationship and how you communicate with um, those that you're in relationship with that helps you understand their language. Even like, like for, they consider someone that you're really close with their body language sends messages to you. Their tone sends messages to you. The situations in which they're, you're the most intimate with people gives you a different message than when you're probably with a large group. So it's all about knowing. 
you might have a friend where you guys have um uh, there's a particular instance where you look at each other and you know exactly what the other is thinking and that's how spiritual direction works it comes with spending time fellowshipping getting to know the holy spirit and creating an authentic and allowing for an authentic relationship so that as you get accustomed to spending time with them you you realize like okay there's a direction that's being released right now let me tune in and follow it awesome i hope that helps there's also a part two to this question and it says how does one really listen to receive their calling hey hey <laughs> hey um it's in the intricacies, which is why being in relationship with God is super important. So that's the first thing that you, or I would advise you, or rather, I'm telling you, because I'm hearing it, something you need to pursue intentionally. And in your intentional relationship with the Holy Spirit, you are going to be able to zone in on the intricacies that make you who you are, that will reveal your calling to you. Because your calling is very clear. Because God created each and every one of us for a purpose. So because we have an intended purpose, if you think about Jeremiah 29, verse 11, where it's, the Bible says, I know, for I know the thoughts that I have towards you. It means it's already been established what your purpose is. Like we could go on to the ladder where it says they're for good and not for evil, you know. That just, you know, brings comfort so that we can accept or answer the call. But it's clear that you are called for an intended purpose. So you know you are being called when you pay attention to the intricacies. And you're able to notice those intricacies when you're, you are in authentic relationship with God. So cultivate that. Cultivate your relationship with God. Desire him for who he is. Find out who he is to you, who he is for you. One of the ways that I was able to strengthen my relationship with God, I think a pivotal moment was the season where I decided to study the, the names of God. Excuse me. Studying the names of God helped reveal God to me in different ways. And then I was able to reflect on how he was showing up in those ways in my life. Hey, this, this thing would not allow me to be great. Woo! Jesus. There we go. Um, yes. So showing him, me knowing who God was and the ways that he would reveal himself allowed me to see how he was showing up in my life. Um, and then in that fellowship and understanding who he was and getting comfortable with God and understanding who he was to me and who I was to him and our relationship becoming like real, it was taking shape and taking form. I began to see the things that he created in me, what he equipped me with. It like consider my personality. I can be big and boisterous, but baby, I love me some quiet time. I and and in that knowing that I I enjoy quiet time, I'm able to settle in the midst of noise. Oh, it's, we're going somewhere. Um, I was able to also see that I I have a very maternal spirit, so it was very clear to me that I had to work with children in some way shape or form i knew from early in my life that i wanted that i was called to teaching um but i didn't know it was a calling until i started developing developing my relationship with god um and realizing that the what i found the most joy in was teaching the art and science of teaching um being in the presence of children and understanding that that particular time of a child's life and why it's so pivotal to be able to have access to children because these children ultimately for the most part and by god's grace all of them are going to outlive me so they are my access to the future even after i've been called home to glory um so also understanding that and then understanding how my childhood traumas were also 
being replicated in the lives of, of kids and how it needed to be intercepted because I'm aware of the damage that it caused for me, what it can't could have caused if not God stepped in and intervened um, through people by his grace and mercies and all that, all that good stuff um, and so on and so forth. And then again, paying attention to the things that I like. I'm still a very much big kid at heart. Give me access to a bouncy house quiet okay um all paying attention to the things that make me fade can me or make me janet for those of you who know me as that or or make me who i am helped me realize what god was calling me to because here's the thing about your calling or your purpose we're all called and we're we're all purposed for something and god gives us passion as a tool to keep us motivated because if if you think about someone and I, and I feel like we all know somebody like this if you think about someone who has a job and you can tell they don't like their job it's a very miserable experience even if they're efficient because there's no passion there's no desire they don't see the big picture considering a corporation like Starbucks that I used to work for I'm sure Harold, I think his name is Harold or Arnold, the stuff of the age. Harold Schwartz, the person who created Starbucks to begin with many, many years ago, he had a passion for coffee beans. I just like to drink the stuff, okay? I don't care about nobody's coffee shop. I don't care about all that. So me working for that company, and even though I was doing well and I was, you know, being offered, you know, or hinted towards offers of promotions and doing this. I ain't want no parts in that because I'm not called to do that. I'm not called to, to um, influence the coffee industry. That's, I don't have a passion for that. I just like to drink it. Okay, I don't have a, <laughs> that's, that's where it ends for me. But because I have a passion for teaching and just like a coffee industry, the coffee industry may have because there's competitors, there's different brands, there's different types, there's science, there's an art to coffee, there's competitors in education, unfortunately. Um, there are different types of education, there are different locations to teach. There's diversity in those fields and in that brings problems and challenges that one who are who is in these fields, no matter actually any field, you have to get over because that, it just comes with the job. So if there's a lack of passion, you are not, when it gets hard, you're gonna wanna give up and throw in the towel. So you have to ask yourself, or ask the Holy Spirit rather, to reveal to you, what are you passionate about? Something that I heard, um, I was told, um, Steve and I rather were taught while we were doing marriage counseling before we got married. Um, thank you, Pastor John, for this. Um, <laughs> he asked us, um, how do we know that we are, you know, meant to be with each other? Like, how do you know she's the one? How do you know he's the one? And, you know, we both responded as authentically as we could. Um, and he said, well, that's great. It's great that you have conviction because it's your conviction that is going to get you through those seasons of your marriage, your marriage that is not gonna feel good. And baby, did that hit home for me because yo, just like everything that is good, there are challenges. So if there is no conviction, if there's no passion, is there, if there's nothing that is going to motivate you to get you to press through those seasons that don't feel good, you're gonna throw in the towel. And remember, it's God that gives you the calling, God that gives you the purpose. So if you cannot press through those challenges because they're gonna come, then you weren't called in, to begin with to that particular thing or that particular sector because it's gonna come and the work has to get done because there is a reward, not because there's a reward. The, it has to get done because the purpose of it is to bring the body of Christ together to bring people unto God. That's the ultimate goal. A bright, a byproduct of that is the reward, you know? So you won't achieve the purpose, neither will you receive the byproduct, which is the reward, if you are not passionate enough to get through the challenges. So you will know that you are 
receiving a call when you are able to align what you're passionate about and then see the area of need in spite of the challenge and your passion still drives you anyway. But then here's the thing about this. This is the caveat to that. Passion and conviction are similar, but they're different. And excuse me if I made them sound the same before. Conviction is the belief that this is what I'm supposed to do. You can't tell somebody who believes something, nothing about what they believe. You cannot change that for them. Like you cannot tell me my name is not Janet. Are you dumb? Nobody can tell me that because I know, I believe it. There's proof of it. I embody being Janet. Nobody could tell me that. You could probably tell me I'm not um, uh, a celebrity yet. And I might believe you because not everybody know me. You don't see me on the TV and all that stuff. There's certain things that you can tell me that I can believe and there's certain things you can tell me that I won't buy into because I know for a fact that this is what it is. That's conviction. That you know that this is it, right? Like no one can tell me that God is not real. I've already received conviction on that. That's the truth. Passion can wear out because it's we're human. We can get tired. You may not feel it anymore, but that doesn't change the conviction. So to wrap, to sum things up, you know you're receiving a call when Holy Spirit reveals to you who you are. You see the alignment of who you are, your passion, and you are convicted about a need irrespective of the challenge. Thank you.